Today we're going to be talking about who is a good candidate for awake surgery. A lot of patients want to know about what makes them a good candidate for having a procedure awake versus in a surgery center or a hospital under general anesthesia. So it's important to talk about the different types of anesthesia. So general anesthesia is what most people associate with surgery where you're fully asleep, you have a breathing tube, and you don't remember anything, you don't feel anything. Um, that can be really good for some of our higher volume liposuction surgeries, but one of the things that we really try to excel at is doing surgeries under minimal sedation, which is actually a little bit lighter than twilight sedation, which involves just taking oral medication and it just makes you relaxed. It tends to not affect your breathing or your blood pressure at all, and that allows you to have conversations with us, move around during surgery, and it also allows you to walk out immediately after your surgery. Some of the other benefits of doing minimal sedation are that you can eat and drink in the morning, you can have coffee if you're a big you know, coffee person, um, but ultimately we, we like it because it gives you agency over yes. what's happening. Why? Um, you Was can it? participate in your surgery, you know that I'm the one that's doing your surgery and not someone else, and overall it just gives people a little bit more of a sense of control. So when we're talking about who is gonna be a good candidate for this, we wanna make sure that number one, it's gonna be safe for them. So anyone that's got medical problems, like high blood pressure, diabetes, lung problems, heart problems. Those are patients that are gonna to need to be monitored with an anesthesiologist in a hospital setting. If we're doing high volume liposuction, legally over five liters, we can't have you do surgery here and stay overnight in the clinic. So that would have to also be done at a, at a hospital. So most of the patients that end up gravitating towards doing procedures awake are pretty low anxiety people. They've had dental procedures before that have gone well uh, they tend to be a little bit less mild in severity if we're talking about lipedema, usually stage one and two patients. Um, and we're doing a small area, so less than five liters in one single session. If you meet all those criteria where you're healthy enough to do surgery as an outpatient, you don't take a lot of medication, it's a smaller amount of lipo coming out, uh, and you're not a jittery or anxious person, this can often be a really good setting for you to have your surgery. So one of the biggest things with patients is the anxiety component. They wonder if they're kind of a nervous person or they have some anxiety or maybe they don't like going to the dentist. So how do they know whether or not they're going to be a good candidate for an awake procedure? Well, I think if you're the type of person that doesn't like to see things medical, smell things, hear things, if you're worried about someone being in your face when we're doing something on your arms, that's probably not a great fit. Um, you would probably want to do things under anesthesia. If you're really afraid of needles or you don't like being poked or really you just don't handle pain well at all, you're really, really sensitive to pain, then um, you know it's, it's not like you're going to be sitting here in pain the whole time, but there are some pokes and there are some pulling and the sensation that something's being done do during some of the procedures. And that can be really disconcerting for some patients, whereas other ones just roll with it. They're like, oh yeah, I feel that, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. I think for me, my comfort level is, I don't mind if you have a short amount of pain that's up to about a four or five on a scale of 10, as long as it goes away quickly. If someone starts feeling like the pain is like a six or seven out of 10, and it's kind of sustained, um, that's not okay. That's not someone that you know we wanna be doing surgery on. So usually when that happens, it's that area is not adequately numbed and we can re-numb it. But um, sometimes there are patients that, that feel like they just are experiencing too much sensation and those patients tend to get less aggressive results. So in the future, we wouldn't book them for any surgeries that are awake. We would focus more on doing their surgery in, under anesthesia at a hospital or a surgery center. One of the nice things about the type of liposuction that we do is that it can actually help with pain control. So I prefer to use PAL or power assisted liposuction and the cannula itself vibrates and oscillates which is kind of like a tuning fork on the inside of your body. So it, you can feel the vibration of the fat, which isn't really painful, um, but that vibration sensation can actually dull the nerves and make you feel like you're not sensing pain. So it can be a little bit distracting, but it also helps with the pain control. Um, it is loud and that's kind of jarring for some patients. So if you're someone that's really sensitive to sounds, then awake procedures may not be a good choice for you. One of the more challenging things to navigate with a patient that wants to do an awake procedure is when they say they've had a hard time getting numb at a dentist or during another procedure. And I'm smiling a little bit because it's always, the, the, the assumption is that they don't, the medicine doesn't work on them. That it either takes too much or 
it, you know, it takes a lot longer. And we see this a lot with people that are redheads. It's, it's easy to say, oh, well, you're redheaded, you need more anesthesia. And that's not always the case. Um, there are some patients that are partial responders to the, to the lidocaine, meaning that it, it doesn't work or bind as well to their lidocaine and they need more. So you have to kind of flood the, the nerves with the lidocaine to make them numb. There are also some patients that are fast metabolizers. So the medication works, but their system chews through it really quickly. So you have to then add more before you would anticipate it. In my experience with patients like this, most of the time they are able to get numb and we're able to complete the procedure. We don't wanna do a procedure that's excessively long because if they do burn through the medication more quickly, we don't wanna get in a situation where we have to give more and we you know, can't safely do that. So um, I find there are a lot of other factors that can make someone difficult to get numb. So if someone doesn't wait long enough after they've injected medicine you know, in your teeth or anywhere else, um, you will sense that because the, the medication hasn't had sufficient time to bind to the nerves to make them numb. So, you know, if someone gives you an injection and they're going right to work a minute or two later, that doesn't mean that you can't get numb. It means that someone didn't wait long enough for you to get numb. Versus um, some patients, if, if the medication has been sitting around for a long time or it's been buffered, it can start to lose its um, effectiveness. Uh, and we wouldn't really know that. So if somebody had old medication or kind of like stale medication that they were using um, that had been sitting around for a week, it may not work as effectively on you. Whereas you would think that you were burning through the medicine or you're resistant to the medicine, it may just be that the medicine needed to be changed. So you know, every morning when we're doing a procedure, I personally mix the two medicine and it's always fresh medication. So it's not like anything that's been sitting around for a day or two. Um, it's maximum, uh, maximum effectiveness is on the day of mixing, right at the time of mixing. Um, so that's why we do it that way so that we don't have to worry about, you know, oh, well, did we mix this a day ago, a week ago? It's always the morning of, and it's always um, going to be the most effective. Going along with the medication, maybe not working, uh, when we deal with patients that have had a prior awake surgery experience that didn't go well, uh, I usually want to ask them, you know, what area was done? How long did the surgery take? Did you ever get numb? What medication were you on before? And we're almost trying to do like a crime scene analysis of like all the different details that went into it and trying to tease out what was it that made it not go so good. For some people, it's it's not the, the getting numb part, it's that they felt like the surgeon was kind of rough or wasn't really you know sensitive enough to, the, to their needs. Um, sometimes it's that they feel like they were too medicated and they were like a little bit out of sorts. Uh, and that bothers some people because they want to have a little bit more control and agency. Um, but one of the key things is that if you've had a suboptimal experience with awake surgery before and you want a revision on that area, it can often be really challenging because of the scar tissue that's already developed in that area. So if you have surgery on your tummy and you're unhappy and it looks like kind of lumpy and you want a revision, it's usually not a good idea to try and do that awake because trying to go through the scar tissue makes it much more challenging to get numb and things tend to pull and tug a little bit more. They tend to be just like a little bit more sensitive. And when that happens, it kind of like snaps you back right into the role of, hey, this is not going well. I'm feeling stuff, I don't like this. And it helps to raise that anxiety level up, which means that the, the surgery is probably not gonna go well. So often if someone wants to do a revision surgery on an area that they weren't happy with from awake surgery, I typically recommend doing that under general anesthesia so that we can get you completely comfortable, you don't have to remember anything, and I can give you a much smoother um, revision result. Thank you for your time and for watching. I hope that this has helped to teach you a little bit about awake procedures and hopefully help to dispel any anxieties that you have about having a procedure yourself.